Uh, thank you so much, Chair. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm taking you to Cameroon, where I will be talking on the evaluation of early experiences uh, in implementing option B plus in the northwest and southwest regions of Cameroon. These are two regions which are English speaking, and there are two regions that have the highest uh, HIV prevalence rate following the DHS of 2004. And when WHO uh, approved uh, option B plus, Cameroon adopted it. Uh, in 2013, uh, without being sure of where probably the personnel will come from, the money will come from, and whether it will be accepted by pregnant women. And so it was necessary to do a pilot, and we thank God that CDC, uh, through some funding from PEFA, uh, funded the CBC Health Board to do a pilot of Option B Plus for the country. And we are working as partners of the Ministry of Health. And so the Ministry of Health graciously asked us to do the pilot in these two regions. So we did it, and the early results that I'm presenting to you actually enabled the government, the Ministry of Health, to actually implement uh, option B+, plus, and it is being scaled up. The methods that we use for this evaluation is that from October 2013 to March 2015, HIV-positive pregnant women and breastfeeding women that were identified in 22 pilot sites, which are actually in two districts, that is Kumba and Baminda, were given option B+. Plus. We gave them, we administer option B plus uh, to them. And then they, uh, we only gave to those that were not yet on any ARVs. And then in order to succeed in this, we had to train nurses in task shifting, which we call task sharing. We did not look at it just as task shifting, but task sharing. Who worked under the supervision of physicians to administer option B plus. And then we use peer educators that we actually coached and helped them to work. We have them to provide community support uh, in tracking defaulters who were enrolled. And they did this by either doing home visits or doing telephone calls to bring them back to treatment. The results that we obtained from doing this from October to March are that we identified a total of 1,800 HIV-positive pregnant and breastfeeding women. And out of this, only 669 actually were eligible for enrollment. And then of the 669, 666 accepted lifelong ART, and uh, three only accepted ART for the period that they were pregnant and the period that they were breastfeeding, after which they had to stop. When you look at the table in front of you, go to the exposed infants, which is the target that we have. You will see that eight of the children out of the 535 that were exposed, eight of them died, and then we lost three to follow up, the loss to follow up, and then uh, we have 430 that actually had a DNA PCR test at six weeks, and then out of the, the 430, 13 of them were positive, and we made sure that we linked all the 13 to care and uh, treatment, they have, we administer treatment to all 13 of them. You see that the 25, which you saw in the table, that refused uh, ART. They did so for religious reasons. In Cameroon, and I believe elsewhere, there are those who believe that they can just pray and a, uh, HIV will disappear from their bloodstream. And so they go to their pastors and they 
try to pray for healing. We've sent our staff to track and talk to the pastors to allow the women on treatment and be praying for them concurrently. We are not very successful with that. 109 women were lost to follow up and of these 56 never returned for refuel after ART initiation and 53 never returned after they had the results. That is, 38 of them of the 53 uh, never returned after the HIV exposed infants received the negative PCR results at six weeks. Look at the curve that you have there, the graph. You will see the cohorts that we have. For the, those monthly cohorts of uh, women who started treatment from October 2013 to March 2014, the average retention at one year is 78% as of March 2015. The March 2014 cohort had the lowest retention at one year, which is just 67%. And actually, we don't yet have an explanation for this. We are still finding out why it will instead drop at that point in time. And if we do get the answers, we will share them with you even by internet. Option B plus implementation lessons that we have learned are that several healthcare providers need to be trained in option B plus at each clinical site to ensure continuity of services because there is always a transfer of staff, staff resign, some go on retirement and they leave services unattended. And so you need to train more than one staff Per site. And then transferring HIV positive mothers from MCH to ART clinic soon after initiation resulted in defaulting treatment. And this is so, again, more so in sites that are not co located. If it's in a co located site where you have care and treatment in the same place and uh, uh, MCH, it may not be as bad. But when you have to transfer them to different locations, Either they don't have transport to be moving or they may uh, be unable to move because of distance and so on. So that is causing some uh, uh, attrition. Then strong defaulter tracking system use, using peer educators is able to improve retention and, on ART, uh, and ART adherence. Strong supply chain for ART and other HIV commodities is essential for treatment and infant retention. These are some of the lessons we've learned over the last period of uh, this evaluation. In Cameroon, option B plus is highly accepted by HIV positive pregnant and breastfeeding women. Unlike when we started, we were afraid it would not be accepted since they have to be on treatment for life but the contrary is true. The retention rate at one year was 78% and mother to child transmission rate is 3% at six weeks. Long-term retention, uh, long retention, mortality and final mother to child transmission after cessation of breastfeeding need further evaluation. The Cameroon Ministry of Health has used these results to implement option B plus at 480 sites, that is from the 22 now, 480 sites are already offering option B plus and the scale up continues and we believe all the health facilities will eventually be covered, funding being available if God so permits. Now I want to acknowledge all these good people um, PEFA funding us through CDC, we are really very grateful. You see the grants, uh, uh, the, uh, the grants number for the award only for the option B plus uh, evaluation. The Ministry of Health in the second map there, you see, was very, very influential and very helpful to help us evaluate this. CDC uh, in country has been wonderful and Elizabeth Glacier Pediatric AIDS Foundation 
our long-term partner, and we have both the old pres uh, vice president and the current vice president sitting on my right there, and I feel very comfortable seeing them around. And uh, the Clinton Health Access Initiative, and I see the director, country director just sitting in front of me, Dr. Devine, I want to thank them for working with us on this evaluation. The wealthies are here, other co-authors that work with us on this evaluation, some of them are inside here. I see Dr. Dinah uh, uh, Duncan there. Thank you so much, and thank you for listening, and I'm sure we did it, you can do it also. Thank you. I think we have time for perhaps one question. Hi, Pius. Um, thank you very much for 